Bible study. We are thankful that you tuned in with us. Um, as a reminder, always keep those on our prayer list, those who are in serious need of prayer. Uh, remember the Sister Mildred Miles, uh, Sister Tish Gibbons, and all of her family. Uh, remember Sister Ball, uh, her daughter Nana. Uh, continue to keep all of them in your prayers. Continue to keep uh, all of our senior members in your prayers. Our first responders, we have many who are here at this congregation, so pray for our first responders, our school teachers, our children who are back in school, whether it be in uh, uh, grade school or college. Keep all of our children in your prayers. Keep our children who are in the armed forces, all of them. We have military at this congregation, so continue to keep all of those who serve uh, on the front lines, all of those who are first responders, our officers, continue to pray for all. Continue to pray for this country. Continue to pray for uh, God's blessings that we will, that the doctors were, are able to find a, uh, a vaccine, a cure, solution, whatever you want to call it, uh, concerning this pandemic. But most importantly, pray for our spiritual minds that we will keep focus on Christ and the things above. Well, join me in this study. Of course, we are in the Beatitudes of Jesus, and we've looked at three of these Beatitudes. We've looked at the poor in spirit. We've looked at those who mourn. We've looked at those who are meek in spirit. And now we're going to look at another one, and that one is those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Let's read the text, if you will, so that we can make our way through our study. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, the Bible says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Notice the progression in these Beatitudes. The first progression that we studied, poor in spirit, uh, gives the sense of an uh, emptying of self. One who understands that they are destitute, they are empty, uh, and in desperate need of Jesus in their life. Uh, they are poor in spirit. The second Beatitude, as you look at the progression, the second Beatitude is one who mourns as a result of sin. They, uh, they are cognizant and they realize that sin is the very reason they are poor in spirit. But Jesus says, you are blessed, you are highly favored, you are of high rank because though you mourn and you recognize uh, your inadequacies because of sin, uh, Jesus says you will be comforted. But then the third progression is those uh, who uh, are meek in spirit. In other words, I mourn because of sin. I recognize that it leaves me poor in spirit. Therefore, now I'm open and ready with a meek spirit to hear God, to hear what God has to say. I'm meek. I'm humbled now because of my state, my inadequacy, and, and my unholiness in view of a holy God. But now Jesus progresses even further when he says, but blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Well, now that sin has left me empty, now that I mourn because of sin, I recognize my state. Now the fact that I've been humbled, I'm ready to hear God. I've emptied myself of self. He says, now it creates in me. Now that I'm empty, it leaves me hungry and thirsty. But oh, notice this hunger and thirst isn't for worldly things. This hunger and thirst isn't after food uh, for the physical body. This hunger is after righteousness. Reminds me of my daughter Brianna. When Brianna was born, Brianna came out of the womb hungry, ready to eat, pitching a fit for the, for the bottle. And the nurses would grab her. We often joke about it even today how the nurses were were so uh, amazed and amused with Brianna and her hunger coming out of the womb ready to eat. And you, those of you who you, you, you 
babysit or those who have children, those who are grandparents, you know that when a, when a baby is hungry, there is nothing you can do to stop that cry uh, un, 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 unless you give that baby the food that they are crying for. Well, Jesus says that's the way you and I have to be. We have to have a cry, a hunger, and a thirst for righteousness. And nothing will satisfy it save Jesus Christ and Christ alone. You got to remember I told you early in this study when we first started that Jesus puts it, puts, uh, paints a picture and shows that these beatitudes all point to him. We're poor, we're poor in spirit. Only Jesus can fill in the blanks of our depraved spirit and soul. We, we, we mourn. It's only because of Jesus and the forgiveness of sins that we will be comforted. We are meek and humble, ready to listen. The only way we can, we can get to God is by listening to Jesus. That's what Jesus would say. Whosoever rejecteth me and receiveth not my words, have one that judgeth him. The words that I speak, same shall judge him in the last day. What is Jesus saying? Listen to me. If you want to get to God, you've got to listen to me. So Jesus is showing us that everything concerning these Beatitudes, they all point to me. Who else is going to satisfy my hunger and thirst? Only Jesus. He points, he's the sum total of all of these Beatitudes. Jesus is showing us that even in every progression of the Beatitude, Jesus remains at the forefront of all of these Beatitudes. So then what we're going to look at, we're going to notice the progression of thought. That is, those who are poor in spirit, mournful of their sins, and meek towards God are now ready to listen to God and we have an intense longing and craving for a right condition before God. This righteousness is attained only in Christ Jesus, who is our righteousness. Listen, meek people understand, those who have a meek spirit, those who are destitute, poor in spirit, these are the people who understand that I don't have a righteousness to offer God. I can't make myself righteous no matter how hard I try. The only thing that I can do is rely on the righteousness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this righteousness only comes through Jesus. This righteousness is the righteousness God placed on our account. Uh, sinful people that they are seen in the sight of God as righteous. Seek righteousness first and then God's blessings will ultimately follow. Let me say that again. Seek righteousness and God's blessings will ultimately follow. What happens, we seek the blessings of God, uh, but we don't seek after the righteousness of God. We don't look at, the, we don't seek after the holy things of God. Well, we want the blessings from God. We want the goodness of God. We want the greatness from God in our life, but we don't want the holiness of God. You know, sometimes the holiness and righteousness of God uh, requires sacrifice from us. It requires us giving up some things. It requires giving up selfishness. Want my own desires and wants. And it causes us to have to, to now put some things that we wanted some things that we long after, some things that we think is best for us, now this challenge of hunger and thirst requires us to now either do away with it or make it absolutely secondary. Jesus in the fourth beatitude ascribes blessedness to those who have an intense desire and craving after righteousness. The promise is that they shall be completely satisfied of spiritual hunger and thirst. Got to keep that in mind. You can have all of the food in the pantry you want and still be hungry after spiritual things. You can have all of the money that you want and still be left hungry and thirsty. Uh, so this, this satisfa satisfa satisfaction will be the satisfying 
of those things that are spiritual. Well, but this is in contrast to the world's frustration as persons seek joy without God and such life results in misery. I want us to bear that in mind. So Jesus says, listen, blessed, happy, highly favored, highly ranked are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Now let's look at the description of the character. The description of the character is that of hunger and thirst. The biblical concept of hunger and thirst um, is often used in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament. Now let's look over to Psalms chapter 42. If you don't mind, Psalms chapter 42. Let me get there. Look at verse number 1. Psalms chapter 42. Now let's begin at verse number 1. The Bible says, as the deer, notice what is written. He says, as the deer pants for water, for the water brooks, my soul pants for you. So the, 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 the psalmist says, just as sure as the deer longs for water by the brook, he says, so my soul thirsts after you. It pants for you. It longs for you. He says, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. And when shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. And while they say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember and I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go along with the throng and lead them in process, procession to the house of God with the voice of joy and thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him for the help of his presence. He says, I, I will hope again. I, why is my soul so disturbed? Why am I uh, uh, panting for uh, uh, in such a way because I need God. I'm in search of God. I'm longing for God. I desire God right now. And the psalmist says, and that gives me hope in a living God and for his presence in my life. Don't you know you've got to welcome God into your life? The problem is we've locked the door in many aspects of our life and we keep God out but we've got to have a spirit and an attitude that longs for God that thirsts for God that says God the door is open to my life I welcome you I bid you to come in that's the attitude that we have to have a hungry soul look at Isaiah come, to, come with me to Isaiah Isaiah chapter uh, 65, I believe it is. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 65. Look at the, side, the flip side of that. Now, Isaiah chapter 65, God is speaking to his people, but they are rebellious people. So rebellious that they end up in captivity. Now, I want you to notice, look at uh, verse 60, chapter 65 of Isaiah, verse number uh we better get verse number eight. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one says, do not destroy it, for there is benefit in it, so I will act on behalf of my servants. And in order not to destroy all of them, I will bring forth offspring from Jacob and an heir of my mountains from Judah. Even my chosen ones shall inherit it, and my servants will dwell there. So God says, before I decide to destroy all of Israel because of their rebelliousness, God says, there are some that I'm going, there's a remnant that I'm going to keep. There are some faithful that I'm going to bless as a result of their faithfulness. But then he says in verse 10, Sharon will be a pasture land for flocks, and the valley of Achor, a resting place for herds. 
for my, now watch this, for my people who seek me. Look at that. The blessings come as a result of the, that remnant of Israel seeking after the Lord. I told you early on, make sure you seek God first and the blessings will follow. Don't reverse it. Don't seek the blessings of God expecting, uh, expecting good results. Always seek the, uh, the, uh, seek the Lord himself first. Which lead, when you seek the Lord first, guess what it does? It puts your mindset on a pathway of spiritual things. It seeks, it puts your mind on a pathway and a realm of, uh, of, of godliness, godly thoughts. It doesn't allow pessimism and it doesn't allow Satan to invade your mind. It doesn't, it doesn't allow despair to enter into your mind. It doesn't allow hopelessness to enter into your mind. It sees light at the end of the tunnel. It sees the blessings while in the pandemic. That's what a, that's what a mind that seeks after God, God will do. You know why? Because that mind focused on God, focused on kingdom business, focuses also on the power of God and you are not so easily moved or swayed because you know it's this God that's in control. He's in control of the world and he's in control of my life. But now you've got to seek him. Now notice, he says this pasture, this resting place is for my people who seek me. But you, watch it, who forsake me or for who forsake the Lord who forget my holy mountain who set a table for fortune and who will fill cups mixed with wine for destiny I will destine you for the sword and all of you will bow down to the slaughter because I called you listen to the language God says I called you but you wouldn't answer here is God. Now notice, God says, seek after me, but before you destroy yourself, I want you to remember, I was seeking after you. I called you, but you wouldn't answer me. You see that? Look, God wants a relationship with us. God wants fellowship. God is calling us in this pandemic. Problem is, we aren't listening. And when he calls, we ignore the call. Watch him, though. I spoke, but you didn't hear. And you did evil in my sight, chose that, that in which I did not delight. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, my servants will eat, but you will be hungry. Who will eat and be, uh, who will eat? It's the remnant that sought after the Lord. Those who will be hungry are those who rebelled and disregarded the call of God. Now watch this. Behold, my servants will drink, but you will be thirsty. Behold, my servants will rejoice, but you will be put to shame. Behold, my servants will shout joyfully with a glad heart, but you will cry out with a heavy heart. You and you will wail with a broken spirit. You will leave your name for a curse to my chosen ones, and the Lord God will slay you. But my servants, my remnant, will be called by another name, because he who is blessed in the earth will be blessed by the God of truth. He who swears in the earth will swear by the God of truth, because the former troubles have been forgotten. Look at that. And because they are hidden from my sight. God says, you want a blessing? Seek after me. You want prosperity in your life? Seek after me. You want the goodness to come not only to you, but to your offspring, to your grandchildren, to your great-grandchildren? He says, well, start seeking after me and then teach them by example to seek after me. Tremendous, tremendous text that we've just read. Well, I need you to come over to Amos chapter eight. Notice Amos chapter 8, 
same thing that happens to God's people. Rebelliousness always gets them in trouble. Forsaking God kept them in captivity. But now, look at Amos chapter 8, verse number, oh my goodness, there's so much in here. Verse number 11. Amos tells God's people, he says, Behold, the days will come, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine in the land. But this famine, notice what this famine is not. He says, not a famine for bread or a thirst for water, physically that is, but rather for hearing the word of God. God says, because you refuse to adhere to me, because you refuse to bring your will in alignment with my will, because you have forsaken me, there will come a famine. There will be a time when I call through my prophets, through my word, and you will not hear. You know why? Because you have become so destitute that you refuse to hear. Let us not be a people who refuse to hear. Let us be always be a people who's hungry for God's word. Now come with me to John chapter 6. Look at John chapter 6. Uh, John chapter 6. Notice in verse 32 is where we'll begin. But you know the, the, the conversation Jesus is having with the disciples and the Jews of that time. Uh, uh, they, they're, having a, they're having a dialogue about uh, uh, Jesus being the bread of heaven um, and, and the works that Jesus have done. And, and so Jesus is going to articulate and elucidate on who he is. They're going to take the notion that, listen, we are of, of, listen, Moses fed us bread from heaven, manna. In the Old Testament, Jesus, don't you remember that? Now, can you top that? And Jesus is going to show them how he's going to top that. How, he, how God, through him, has already topped what Moses was able to provide for them. Notice verse number 30. Uh, actually, look at verse number um, 26, Jesus answered them and said, truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me, now watch this, not because you saw signs, but you seek me uh, because you ate of the loaves and you were filled. In other words, they were seeking Jesus. He had just fed the multitude, the 5,000. He had just fed them. Now they're searching after Jesus again Notice, because their physical needs were never met. Well, he met their physical needs initially, but they can't see that Jesus is here to meet their spiritual needs. He says, oh, you're only seeking me because your stomachs were filled. But watch this. Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the Lord, for the food, excuse me, which endures to eternal life which the Son of Man will give to you, for on him the Father, God, has set this seal. Therefore they said to him, well, what shall we do so that we may work the works of God? Jesus said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe on him or in him who he sent. So they said to him, what uh, what then do you do for a sign? Jesus had just fed the multitude. And here they come, they're asking for a sign. You know why? Because they are approaching Jesus. They are seeking Jesus for the wrong reason. Oh, that's a good lesson for us to keep in mind. I've been talking about seeking after God and seeking after Jesus, but you've got to have the right motives as well. Jesus says, you're seeking me just for your physical needs. And I'm afraid to have to tell you, there are some Christians, there are some people who come to worship, who sit in the pews every Sunday, sit in Bible class, but they are only there to check their names off on the roll with the expectation that God is going to give them something, some physical blessing. And they're not seeking God for spiritual satisfaction. Watch this, though. He says, they, they say, what do you do for a sign so that we may see and believe? 
Uh, and what work do you perform? Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Now look at what they're saying. They're saying, now Jesus, what are you going to do? Now and here's the thing. What sign will you give us so that we may believe? And as a matter of fact, Jesus, don't you know that uh, our forefathers, Moses, gave us manna from heaven itself? What can you do that's better than that, Jesus? Watch this. Jesus said to them in verse 32, Truly, truly, I say to you, is, it is not Moses who gave you bread out of heaven, but it was my Father who gives you true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down of, out of heaven and gives life to the world. But then Jesus said to them, uh, then they said rather, uh, Lord, always give us this bread. But Jesus said, well, what do you know? I am the bread. I am the bread of life. And he who comes to me will not hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst. Are you seeing this, church? Are you seeing this, friends and family? Jesus says, you want to be satisfied in life? Seek me. You want to have your needs met? Hunger after me. Thirst after me. And why is that is so important? Because our bodies will fail. It will come a time, perhaps, that we won't be able to eat. Sometimes, the older you get, your body rejects certain food. Your appetite decreases. But Jesus says, if you seek me, your appetite for me will never decrease. If you seek me, you will always be satisfied. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous passage. Well, another scripture, and we won't turn there for the sake of time, but if you would look at John chapter 7, verse 37 through 38, and you'll understand um, that the meaning becomes clearer to us, especially in a crisis especially in a, in, a, in a pandemic that we are in right now, the meaning of hunger and thirst becomes even more meaningful and important and it clarifies a lot of things for us when we put this in the proper perspective. Listen, the meaning is, is clearer when there's a shortage of water. The meaning is clearer when there is the possibility of no food available, the meaning is clearer when, you, it, it, the, when we face an uncertainty of a cure, a remedy, and a vaccine for this pandemic. The meaning becomes clearer of what it means to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Listen, we're going to stop here. Thank you for joining me in this Bible study. We're going to continue to study a little further what it means to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross for us. Father, it's because of the cross that we hunger and thirst for righteousness. That Father, we hunger for our to, for a need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, to be able to communicate with you. Father, we hunger for that. We thirst for that. We're asking that you satisfy each and every one of us. Meet our needs, Father, and help us to keep this thing in the right perspective, and that is a spiritual perspective. Father, we recognize that you are our God, you are awesome, you are powerful, and that you are in control of everything. Father, give us the faith that we need to continue further, to press, press on, even in this pandemic. Father, we pray and ask that you will bless those on our sick and shut-in list. Bless those who are in need of prayer. Bless, uh, Father, those who have been stricken with this virus and those who have been able to overcome it. Father, we give you praise for that. Father, we ask that you bless our, protect our first responders and those who are out there uh, looking on the front line for us. Bless those in our armed service who are fighting and uh, striving to keep our country safe. Father, we thank you for all that you have put in place for us. Father, 
uh, I, I continue to ask your prayers for one of my uncles who been in a serious car wreck and has a pin now put in his 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 leg. And I ask that you will uh, you will uh, bless my uncle Ricky that he will heal um, and that father uh, he will look to you for the importance of his soul that he will look to you to give you glory and honor in his life. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing through this congregation. We thank you all for, for what you're doing for our many members who represent you near and far. We give you all the honor and praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.